the 17th, Sunday of the Pentecost, and we hear again in Bethania. In the epistle, all the seven Sunday of Pentecost are taken, and he called her to the Ephesians, chapter 4. Brethren, I, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the calling, of the vocation in which you are called, with all humility and mildness, with patience, supporting one another in charity, careful to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in us all, who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. And then the gospel. We can record the same Matthew chapter 22. At that time, the Pharisees came to Jesus, and one of them, a doctor of the law, asked him, tempting him, Master, which is the great commandment of the law? Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with thy whole mind. And this is the greatest in the first commandment. The second is like unto this Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments dependeth the whole of the law and the prophets. And the Pharisees being gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think you of the Christ? Whose son is he? They say to him, David's. He said to them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how, how is he his son? No man was able to answer him a word, ever there is any man from this day forth, that day forth, ask him any more questions. That's all the word for today's holy gospel. And then for us only those to men. Today a few considerations taken primarily from St. John Chrysostom on honor and prayer. He says that to consider as we begin to read the book of Esther in the sacred scripture today, we begin to read the book of Esther, we find that the king, the cruel king, he had a friend named Ammon. And Ammon thought that his friendship was sufficient to get the king to turn away and to kill, to, to do a great evil act and to kill all the Jews. That friendship is something that comes up several times in the sacred scripture and also many times in life. And that a friend is one, then what must one do for a friend? Look at the Holy Scripture, it says the St. John Christendom, and you will see that Jonathan endangered his own life and was, a, was in danger of being killed by his own father and provoked the wrath of his own father in order to save David, who was his friend. And Achimelech, was a priest, he was killed because he defended the outlaw, David, and gave him the sword of Goliath and the food to eat and so on. Therefore, he was killed by the soldiers of Saul. And so Achimelech died, and Jonathan, Jonathan was one who was ready to die, but he did not actually die uh, it's, uh, because of his friendship with David, but he was in danger because of it. And so some say friendship is the greatest thing. And one must be ready to lay down his life for his friend. As let our Lord Jesus Christ say, greater love than this no man hath than that he lays down his life for his friend. Now we are in a time in which soldiers have been saying this at least for the last 20 years. Spoken to many, many soldiers why when they, when they were in Iraq, especially since the time of the Iraq War, that they say, why am I in the soul? What, what am I, what's my main duty as I am fighting? The reason why I fight and why I fight against the Muslims and fight against whoever I'm fighting against is because I'm there to protect my friend. And I lay down my life for my friend. And what used to tell these soldiers, if you want to really lay down your life, the best thing you can do to protect your friend is don't go to Iraq. Stay here in a bar. It'll be a lot safer. If you really want to be protecting your friend, then don't take him into a place of combat. Don't do that. 
And so there is, so what do we say about this friendship? And St. John Chrysostom says, there are friends, but there is there something higher than a friend? For these two things run side by side, says St. John Chrysostom. Honor and friendship. And let not friendship outrun honor. So these two things run side by side, says St. John Chrysostom. Friendship and honor. Honor and friendship. And let not friendship outrun honor. For honor is higher than friendship. And honor is, it, without honor, there is no true friend. For how many times has it happened also in the world that not only Ammon, but many other cases in the sacred scripture and also in history where a man has asked another to sin for friendship, for fellowship. King Henry VIII once went privately to John the Beckett, St. Thomas, uh, Thomas More, and said, if you will at least not accept, you have your, you have your moral code while you won't accept the, mad, the evil marriage with Anne Boleyn. But for fellowship, could you not do it for fellowship? Sacred scripture also says concerning friendship, it says that in the book of, of the Proverbs, that there is no great more rare thing than a friend. And most men go through their entire life without ever having a single one. So there is friendship, and there is friendship. And there is honor, and there is honor. Now what is this friendship? Nowadays, many, many souls, how are many sins committed for the sake of friendship? This kind of friendship is called by the Holy Mother Church, bad companions. Bad companions are friends. And very often, even wise modern men say, they may have tried to talk to an alcoholic, a drunkard, says, is this your friend? Is he your friend because you drink together? Is he your friend because you go to bars together and sin together? Is he your friend because you do things together? What is he the friend of? He is the friend of drink. He is the friend of pleasure. He is the friend of wine. He is the friend of drugs. He is the friend of money. And you are also the friend of drink and the friend of wine and the friend of drugs and the friend of pleasure. And therefore, you call yourselves friends. But what are you the friend of? You are not the friend of each other. You are the friend of drink. And what happens when someone interferes with you and your friend? You get upset. So if there is one drink sitting on the table and two friends, and they both need that drink, what shall happen? One of them is going to have a bloody nose. One of them is going to be sorrowful, and the other one will be close to his friend. Two men are friends. But what happens? They need a girl. There is one girl, and there are two friends. Come back a little bit later, and you will find that those friends are enemies. Hence we see, first of all, concerning friendship, as our Lord Jesus said, said, Saint, Saint, Sacred Scripture speaks very wisely when Sacred Scripture says, a friend is a very rare thing indeed. And most people go through their entire life without ever having a single one. So speaks the Holy Ghost. And yet all of us speak of our friends. We are friends because we have a common thing that holds us together. And when that common thing is taken away, our friendship is lost. And St. John Chrysostom says, this is true of all friendship. Because there is a friend and a friend. He is a man and the other is a man. How can they be held together? Unless there is a third thing that holds them together. And this third thing is greater than the two friends. If you have two blocks of wood, unless the nail is greater... Unless the glue is greater, the two blocks of wood cannot be held together, for one wood can never be held. Two woods that are equal can never be held. St. Augustine also points out concerning friendship that friendship can only be had between equals. One cannot be the friend of his father. One cannot be the friend of a son. 
One cannot be the friend of a king. One a king cannot be a friend of a servant. Friendship requires equals. And equals, uh, equals, it is so hard to hold an equal together. Because when you have a hierarchy, it is easy. The king is in charge. The father is in charge of the family and so on. And there is a hierarchy, and so the glue is more easily held together because we know where things fit in their place. But how do equals stay together? How do two men that are both employees, two men that are both privates in the army, two men that are just ordinary laymen, two men that are just ordinary priests, two men that are just ordinary bishops, two men that are ordinary anything of the same level, how can they be friends? And we are all can be called friends in our human nature, and that we all have human nature. So in a certain way, we can all have a kind of friendship. But this friendship cannot be had unless there is another thing that holds us together. And it is usually drink, women. It is usually some kind of pleasure, even legitimate pleasures, such as the friends you play basketball with. I remember in the seminary when we had our, our brief recreation, all of us great friends got together to play basketball, and we poked out a guy's eye and busted a guy's leg, and they laid on the court and said, are you going to play or not? <laughs> well, you know, you to get off the court. <laughs> and he would crawl off the court crying, and then we would play. And then the time of friendship would come. The bell would ring for silence. The bell would ring that it is no longer time. We can no longer play basketball. <clears throat> And then 10 seminary, oh, you poor thing, how are you, man? I hope you're all right. Let's get you to the doctor. Sure, be silent. And so if that's true friendship, we really cared when the bell rung. Now, what is friendship? We're the friends of even legitimate things. For instance, we're friends because we can go to Mass together. But St. John Chrysostom says, there is only one thing that can hold friendship together. And there is only one thing that makes a friend a true friend, and that is honor. For honor makes friendship possible. And honor holds friendship together. And honor is the rule of friendship. Now, what does it mean to honor? There are two kinds of honor that is inside of me. Then there is the honor that I receive from another. One of the great desires of men is to be honored and it was also a desire put into us by God. God put this honor inside of us. For St. Thomas Aquinas says, That which has dignity, that which has goodness, is worthy of honor. That which has dignity and goodness is worthy of praise and should be praised. And God will make sure that every good deed that we do in this life shall be praised. It shall be honored. For those that do good deeds in this life, and then they repent of their good deeds, and they turn into mortal sin, and they don't go back to God, the honor is paid to them in this life. Even Annette pointed that out in 1937 when she went to hell. She had done some natural good things in her life. And she said these natural good things, she received a brief natural re re a reward that she had received on earth before she received her just punishment of eternal damnation. When one the, when goodness should be praised and dignity should be honored, says St. Thomas Aquinas. And what, what is one of the things that happens in heaven? When a soul dies that has done good before God, a soul dies that has lived in the life and love of God, they shall be honored. They are placed upon our altar and they are called saints. And we honor the saints. But this honor comes from the outside. And this honor is not, has nothing to do with us. This honor does not make happy. And this honor does not give us glue. It does not hold us together. It is the other honor, the honor that is inside of me. I also must have honor inside of me, by which I honor goodness, by which I honor truth, by which I honor God, by which I honor the King, by which I honor the Holy Father, the Pope by which I honor the priesthood, by which I honor the, 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 the faithful of God, by which I honor my own father and mother, by which I honor my own children, by which I honor my neighbor. Each one of you notice when we say the word honor, notice how the word is the same. But inside of your mind, you recognize there is one honor given to the Pope. There's another 
honor given to a child. Another honor given to a life. Another honor given to a king. Another honor given to the priest. Another honor given to the layman, and so on. But this honor must be inside of me. Now, what is the rule of this honor? I will never dishonor the king. There is a hierarchy of honor. Two men are equals, but what makes them hold together? Honor. This is one of the good poems of Robert Lovelace, speaking to his, his to Lucasta. Says that you, I am going to war, he says, and I am going to choose the foe over thee, and I shall be unfaithful and inconstant. But this inconstancy, my dear, is such that I could not love thee so much, loved I not honor more. So this inconstancy thou too shalt adore, for if I love not this honor much, that so much I could not love, if I, love I, I could not love thee so much, love thy not honor more. A recognition, the friend of God, didn't live very long, but he recognized that there's something greater than love. There's something greater than the love of Lucasta. There's something greater than the love of a friend. There's something greater than the love of anyone, and that is honor. And no man can live and call himself alive without honor. And this is the honor by which inside of my own heart I honor those that are my superiors. There is a commandment out of the Ten Commandments which has the word honor in it. We have the thou shalt not commandments. But we have one honor. One commandment says keep holy. And this is the third commandment. And another honor, commandment says honor. And this is the fourth commandment. So to keep holy and to honor are two of the most important things that we human beings have to do. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Keep holy the Lord's day. Honor thy father and mother. Honor, therefore, is not something secondary to a human being. And how does Satan create such wickedness in our world? And what is it that made Dante, made Judas, and the lowest part of hell tied to the feet of Satan? And what is it that made Dante say wisely what all men of wisdom say, that there is no greater sin than the traitor? There is no greater sin than the sin of the traitor. There is no deeper place in hell. The infidel, he does great evil. The murderer does great evil. But who is the most evil of all? He is called the traitor. Now, why is he a traitor? He is a traitor because he has violated honor. He has violated the essence of his nature as a man in relationship to all other men. For when we say, honor thy father and mother, it includes to honor thy father and mother's children, which are your brethren, it includes to honor your own children, which are also your brethren. It includes to honor all men. It is included in that word to honor thy father and mother. And there is a hierarchy in order to this honor. Honor God first. Then honor the, the Holy Mother of the Church. And then honor the King. What is it that requires us to make the choices of our life? Two friends can be really friends if they love honor above each other. Let not friendship outrun honor, says St. John Chrysostom, for honor and friendship shall run together, but let not friendship outrun honor. Well, so what does it mean to honor? It means inside of my heart, I always have a piety. I always have a submission of spirit and fear of the Lord of all of my superiors, and from this comes honor. Starting with God, what is it that made the apostles stand up in the very first persecution, even before St. Stephen was martyred? And they were thrown into prison. And they said, we obey God rather than men. And this is honor, to obey God rather than men. Now notice this word, says St. John Chrysostom. He says, bear not, uh, thou shalt not bear false witness against men, since you cannot bear witness against your neighbor. The greatest sin is to bear witness against your neighbor. And St. John Christopher says, no, it is not a sin to bear witness against your neighbor. It is a sin to bear false witness against your neighbor. For it is not every witness 
that must be protected. What happens if you see your neighbor murder the Pope, or your neighbor murder another man, or do some very great evil to which there must be a public punishment that must be brought forth? If you see your closest friend commit this great evil, then honor demands that you shall turn it in. That is what honor demands. Therefore, you shall not bear false witness against the neighbor who may be born. And hence, be aware of the fact that it is there for St. John They say thou canst not bear witness against thy friend. And it is true that thou shouldst not bear witness against thy friend normally. It is generally an evil thing. But if there are very serious matters, if your closest friend tells you, I have a plan, and I am a general in the army, comes to me and says, I am a fellow general in the army, and I have a plan, and my plan is to overthrow the kingdom, and my plan is to hand myself over to the enemy, and I have been offered a sum of money to the enemy, and I am now offering it to you. Thanks, but no thanks is not sufficient. It is not sufficient to say, I am also not going to be a traitor, but rather, honor demands that this man be turned in. Honor demands that he be combated against and that he be exposed for his grave evil of a most serious nature. What does a friend do? And Lord Jesus Christ also speaks concerning the normal troubles between friends. He says, if thy friend offend thee, if thy friend offend God, go to him privately and correct him, that he might be amended and your friendship may grow stronger. If he does not listen to thee, then call a few others. Because he is thy friend, and you want him to be amended. But if after a third warning he does not remend, then, then condemn him to the church, and let him be anathema. Friendship is actually the, the reason for the, the punishments of the church. It is the reason for the way in which the church rules its correction of souls. Why do we correct souls? Because we are their friends. We speak to them in order to pull them back to God. The most place, the greatest place of this kind of friendship is called the Holy Confessional, by which we go inside the confession and honor and truth and goodness and God is honored above the individual soul and above the individual priest who hears the confession. Therefore, let these two things always run together, honor and friendship, but never let friendship outrun honor. In our age, the devil has tried to kill honor. Now, what is the way in which he kills it? How do you make traitors? You come to a man and you say, you have been wronged by your king. You have been mistreated by your king, and you deserve more. What is that appealing to? External honor. Honor is being used to destroy honor. This was done to a man who's now being turned to saint the last few years, in our American history, named Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Benedict Arnold was a great general, and he, but he wasn't a great mason. He didn't have the right buddies, and he didn't have the right amount of money. It's nice being a great general, but if you're not a great mason, and you don't have the right buddies, you are going to be mistreated. He fought the American Revolution on the American side, and he was... He did not receive the external honor that he should have received. And therefore, he became a traitor. He became a Judas. And notice concerning this Judas, the English that paid him off and made him into a Judas. They took his money and they accepted his betrayal, but they did not ever honor him. They despised him. Not only did the Americans despise him, but the English also despised him, because traitors should always be despised. Creating a tra traitor is the worst kind of sin. We do not want to be a Judas. And why is this? Because it is the greatest violation of honor, and the greatest violation of friendship. There are many violations of friendship, but this is the greatest and most wicked one, for a man to be a friend with another man on condition that there is honor between them. And this honor is more important than their friendship. Very often a friend may kill another friend in battle. If two men are true friends, and one is in the German, in the Confederate army in the Civil War, 
and the other is in the Union Army in the Civil War. And they are fighting each other. The true friend will try to kill the other friend because the honor of his, of his army and the honor of his king is more important than their friendship. And they will not harm their friendship when one kills the other. They can still remain friends. For they have been put on either side of a battle, and they are on either side of a war, and they therefore must kill each one another. And this does not harm their friendship nor their honor. This is why in ancient wars, previous to our modern times, soldiers could kill one another. In World War I, we read of the Germans and the English and the French and the Americans killing each other. No drop of hatred, no drop of anger one towards another. They each fulfill their duty. For the foundation of honor also says, wisdom. what is the building stone, the foundation stone of honor? It is called duty. Duty is the foundation stone. And honor to the king and honor to God above all. This is the glue and the aim. And the man of honor, he is the greatest warrior. The man of honor is the, is the greatest and most formidable enemy of the Satan. And he cannot be overcome by bribes. He cannot be overcome by all false friendships. Because remember, between one man and another, and the glue is the friendship. Now the glue can either be money, or the glue can be good times, or the glue can be any sin, or the glue can be honor. All the other glues fall apart. Check the kingdom of hell. We're in the kingdom of hell, all of the damned who are there by the billions. They were all glued, and they all call themselves friends when they were in this world because they liked pleasure. They liked all manner of envy. They liked all manner of the seven capital sins. And now all they have is themselves and their sins. All they have is the glue of envy, the glue of pleasure, the glue of money, and all that glue is gone. And they have only each other. And therefore, what do the damned do in hell? They curse and they spit and they hate and they are violent one towards another and they increase the hell of their neighbor. Which is why Jean-Paul Sartre was very wise. Before he did the right, before he committed Harry Carey and suicide, <laughs> he was very wise. When in his play No Exit, he simply said at the end, "My neighbor is hell." For when we are friends of anything other than honor, the end result is my neighbor must be hell. In the modern marriages, they cannot be friends. In the modern relationships, they cannot be friends. Because they do not have the glue of divine love. They don't have the glue of the divine goodness and the divine truth and the divine law standing upon the rock of duty, holding them together. He who has the glue of the divine God above him and the divine truth above him and the king above him and the country above him, we can never be traitors against our country. We can never be traitors against our families. We can never be traitors against our God. The true God, our families, and our country, and the representative will be the first ones to put us to death. Let them do as they wish. Let us never, ever stand against honor. Honor is the glue that will win in the end. And remember the honor of two sides, not the honor by which we are honored. But this honor will come in heaven, and you will even be given in small doses here in this life, when God wills it to be given. But that honor is from the outside and is not of our concern. Our honor must be the honor that is on the inside. And also the honor on the outside is most dangerous, for it is used by the devil to turn us away from God. You, Benedict Arnold, should have been honored. He was not offered money. He was simply told, you should have been honored and you were not. You were wronged. You were mistreated. Therefore, you must be a traitor against this land. And so he was a traitor. Forget about whether the side was right or wrong. He is a traitor and deserves the treatment of all traitors. Remember when the traitor before God killed Saul and God said, Saul must die. God said that. And Saul commanded the traitor, kill me because I am not yet dying and I want you to kill me quickly. In obedience to Saul, he killed him. And that traitor came to David and said, I have the crown. 
of Saul. And now you can be king because Saul is dead. How did he die? How do you know he died? I killed him. Why did you violate the honor of God? For no man can touch the king. I don't care if the king tells you that he will to kill him. He is the anointed of God. And no man has the right to tell you to, to, to attack the anointed of God. And therefore David immediately killed him. Because David held honor above all else. And then he was not accepted as king. And he had to fight for years to be accepted. But only if he had not loved honor, if he had murdered Saul or killed him justly because Saul was trying to honor of God, if he'd only gone against the honor of God and praised that wicked man, he would have been accepted as king. But he was not. He had to fight his way, but he reigned for 40 years. And he is the king after the king of kings, by which we say, what is a great king? What does it mean to be a king? To have the mind of a king? Do you have the heart of a king? Do you have the spirit of a king? Do you have the way of a king? It is the way of David. And David loved honor above his friends. Hence he wept when Jonathan died. But he never ever told Jonathan, Jonathan, I am your friend. Saul is a problem. Remove him. Eradicate him. He never used his friendship with Jonathan, in order to go against the law of God. When Jonathan died because of his fidelity to his father, Jonathan died because he refused to be unfaithful to his father. And by refusing to be unfaithful to his father, he remained a true friend of David's. And the fathers of the church tell us, what does it mean to be a friend? Look to Jonathan, look to David, and you will learn what friendship is. Jonathan warned David to save his life several times. But Jonathan never betrayed his father. And Jonathan stood in battle next to his father when God commanded the death of his father. And he fought beside his father and he was killed beside his father. And he died in honor and he is now in heaven. And he receives his reward, dying next to the evil Saul, being faithful to a true friend of David and loving honor above David. And David loved honor above Jonathan. And hence their glue remains in such a way that we call all friends who can be called friends those that are like unto David and Jonathan. And so let us remember that friendship is rare indeed. And why it is rare? Because we love not honor above all our neighbors. And whoever loves honor above his neighbors will learn what love is. He will learn what is the true glue that holds man and man together. And he will be the, and also know how it is to truly be a warrior who will fight with the heart of David in order to arrive at the kingdom of God and his great victory. So let us learn the way of honor and true friendship. Never ever, as St. John of Christendom says, let friendship, never let friendship outrun honor. Honor must always be in the front. So I you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.